Are you a silver stacker and ever wondered what a dealer's take would be on stacking silver and when, how, and why to stack silver? You know, I kind of thought about this subject a little bit. I get asked a lot of questions. And as a dealer, you've got to have an answer, at least an answer that makes sense. Uh, answer based on experience and an answer based on a lot of knowledge about silver and the market. And you're not going to get everybody to agree with you, but, you know, at least if you can make some sense and, and maybe come to the terms that maybe we just disagree a little bit on the subject. You know, bottom line is, is that I'm going to talk about a little bit uh, some of the questions that I've been asked and I'm going to try to answer them the best I can. I'm going to skip the intro in this video except to say that my name is Daniel and you know, I am a coin dealer. I have a coin shop down here in Portsmouth, Ohio. It's a small town. Uh, we do have a lot of foot traffic, and I'm connected with a lot of different dealers and collectors. And I, I wanted to approach this silver stacking uh, subject. One of the things that I want to put out there first off, people walk in and they're like, look, what do you think? I hear silver can go to $100 an ounce or $200 an ounce, or it's supposed to be at 50 or 60 and I, my answer to that is, is you can't pay attention to what any of the predictions are. I don't care how rich or how experienced anyone is. I don't care who they're talking for, their spokesperson for Kitco even. It doesn't really matter. No one can guarantee what this market is going to do. No one can predict it. And if they do predict it, it's just by chance. Because you have all kinds of people from all different walks of life with all different kinds of income telling us that silver is either going to go up, it's going to stay up, so this is going to happen, it's going to go through the roof, fiat currency is going to die, and our economy is going to be in the shambles, and you better have your silver and your gold. The problem is, is that we need to really look at this. Look at this very much. And, you know, also let's say that not even to, for the sake of me being right or you being correct, you love silver. Okay, that is something you believe in and you believe in what you think is going to happen. You've listened to the talking heads and you firmly believe that our currency is going to be devalued and our economy is going to go to pot and that we're literally going to have to use silver to survive or even gold. You know, the bottom line is, is that you might love silver, okay, but you're in a minority. Most people don't like silver. Most people don't like gold. They don't think of it like you do. It's not currency to them. And that's the majority of the people in the United States. And a lot of you think that you're going to buy stuff with that silver. And, that, you know, and maybe in some crazy event, there's going to be some people who would trade for that silver that you have. You know, Maybe let you buy some things. But I just, I, like I said, I'm just not a proponent of this economy or this United States becoming so bad that you're going to need to survive with uh, stacks of silver. You know, but more than likely, they're going to want some government backing guaranteeing the value of currency or anything that someone's trying to sell to them, whether it be the gold and silver or currency. They're going to want something like that because the United States is different because we've become dependent on large government and the government uh, actually protecting us and the government providing this and that for us. And people are into the socialism. You know, I don't whether I agree with it or not, it doesn't matter. But the thing of it is, is it, people don't look at gold and silver like they used to, you know, and even then, not everybody had gold and silver. You know, it was always the people that had a little extra income and most people were in poverty and they traded things other than gold and silver. That's what's more likely to happen. And I feel like I'm kind of straying off topic here, but, you know, you have to understand something as well. There's plenty of fake silver bars out there, fake silver rounds, and you're going to have to be able to guarantee to these people that what you have is actually legit silver, that it is actually pure silver, that it is not some plated bar. And that's something else that you need to be concerned about. Do you think everybody's going to own a Sigma if everything goes to crap? And another thing that people come in and like, when's the best time to buy? And obviously the best time to buy is whenever you feel like buying, whenever you have a little extra cash. But really is to buy it as low as possible. It seems people see it going up and they start buying then. But when it's down, you need to buy it when it's down. Another thing I kind of recommend is hedging a little bit if you can. You know, if you're buying it, um, you know, you kind of want to, when it goes up a little bit, sell off a little bit and make a little bit of profit and reinvest that profit. And if that's one of the things that people don't think a lot of. They buy it and they don't really want to get rid of it. 
But, you know, hedging is not a bad idea, but definitely buy low. I mean, don't wait for it to start jumping and everybody start predicting, you know, $50 again and $100 again. There's just no guarantee that that's going to go up $100 an ounce or $200. There's just no guarantee of that. So just buy it when it's low. It's low right now. Buy it now. You know, it gets to $14 an ounce. You should be buying as much as you can. You know, then I have people ask me, you know, what's the best silver to invest in? What's the best thing to buy? The first thing that comes out of my mouth is constitutional silver. But I get that, you know, silver, Roosevelt dimes and Washington quarters and Kennedy half dollars. Uh, any dealer is going to pay less than melt uh, for most of those. And even Franklin's and, and Walking Liberty. Sometimes that's going to happen, too. They'll pay a little less than melt for those unless they're special or uncirculated. Um, it was at one time you, you were told to buy the uh, BU examples of all those, and that might be a good idea as well. But you know, like I said, if you it depends on what you're buying for. You know, if you're buying just to invest or, or resell later on, I mean, when are you going to sell this? That's the whole point. I mean, when are you going to sell it? Are you ever going to sell it? Or when are you going to trade it? I mean, what what's going to have to happen so that you can actually trade your silver? So those are things you have to wonder. And then you have to consider when you buy bullion, uh, whenever you're, like let's say, the special art rounds and bars and bars that are poured and that have a premium on them, you're paying a pretty large premium for them. A constitutional silver actually has a monetary value as well as you can almost get it at melt. To me, it always seemed like constitutional silver was the best, but, but really just buying silver low is probably your best bet. Uh, and that's kind of leads me into, uh, you know, generic rounds. Those are good things to buy. A lot of times you can get those close to melt as well. I think there was a dealer offering it just around melt at one of the shows. I think silver was like sixteen ninety something, and it was uh, wanting to sell it for seventeen dollars. So that's not too bad of an investment. You're not paying a huge premium unless you know silver would drop. And then the hundred ounce bars. I mean, you think about hundred ounce bars and ten ounce bars and five ounce bars. You know, the smaller bars are more popular. A one ounce bar just seems to be more appealing. It's easier to sell. You know, if you need to sell fifty of your hundred ounces, uh, you can't do that with a hundred ounce bar. You know, you can't hedge a hundred ounce bar. You can hedge a hundred ounces of silver and one ounce bars. So I guess my thing is, is I, I would stay away from hundred ounce bars personally, but you know, people still buy them and they still sell them. Uh, but you know, you can think about it. I mean, if, if silver did go to a hundred dollars an ounce, that's a ten thousand dollar bar. Who is going to have the ten thousand to buy it? And where are you going to trade it? And what for? You can't very well get a loaf of bread with it. You can't get, you know, like I said, I don't believe that's going to happen. It's just as an example. There are people who truly believe that our economy is going to really go bad and we're going to need gold and silver to survive. You know, I'm not one of them, but I get that some people do believe that. And then I could ask if you as a dealer, what would you buy? What would you collect? What would you invest in? And I'm, you know, I live the market. I don't collect. I don't save. I don't stack. You know, that's one of the things. My inventory is my collection, and it is a revolving collection. You know, I may have some of the same things all the time. There's coins that I see, and I have an inventory all the time, the same dates, mints, and denominations, and types. But as far as the silver is concerned, you walk into my door, it's all for sale, every bit of it. I don't collect it. It's, it's just not one of those things where if I collect it and I keep it back, then I don't have it for a customer. So being a business, you know, I'm basically kind of hedging. I'm getting my... Um, profit. I'm paying my bills. You know, I may put a little bit of something in, you know, accounts, retirements or whatever. But, you know, my thing is, is it's not about actively stacking or collecting or anything like that. If anything, I collect uh, junk coins and damaged coins and minor errors and die deterioration coins just to show in my videos. But as far as silver stacking or gold or anything like that, uh, it's not something that I do as a dealer. I'm sure that other dealers might, but, you know, it's not something that I'm doing actively currently. Uh, you know, I would love to put together a really nice Morgan Dollar set, but not so much for an investment purposes, but just because I love the coin. And that's bring leads me to the last thing is is you need to, if you're silver stacking or even collecting or anything that you're doing right now, you need to figure out why you're doing it. And then once uh, that comes to a head, basically whatever is going to happen, what are you going to do with it? You know, if you're, my thing is do it because you love it. Uh, don't do it as an investment. Uh, don't do it because you think the apocalypse is coming. Um, you know, just put it back. Enjoy it. Have fun. Uh, don't stress out about it. Don't get in these all these debates over why, when, and how, and if it's going to be this or that. I mean, I, people can get really upset about stuff, and it's just not worth it. Let's just have fun. That's what this hobby is about. And I hope this answered a few questions that you might have, uh, maybe that you wanted to ask a dealer. Um, you can always ask me questions in the comments. 
Uh, actually, I can put them together in another video even. Because as a dealer, I, I can answer a lot of your questions. You know, like I said, I live the market. So anyways, thanks for watching my latest video. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click that little bell. Well, if you're in the market to buy coins, or you're actively collecting, come over here to go to coin auctions. And you can actually buy from legitimate dealers who are selling legitimate coins.